I'm going to very quickly repeat something that I said yesterday uh, because there are uh, new faces here and also because I'm not sure how well I said it yesterday. I was jet lagged from two red eyed flights uh, in a row and that is that economic freedom is important not just for the economic gains, but also for the changes in the dynamics of a society. Without economic freedom, with a nation and the economy ruled uh, by a crony capitalist or crony socialist elite, uh, being part of the privileged group in power, whether it's an ethnic group, political group, religious group, being part of that group is all important. And that means uh, that it divides people against people, sect against sect, political grouping against political grouping, because political power is not just a policy issue. It's an issue of getting a job, of getting an education, of supporting your family. And that fight for power creates divisions in a society that can become truly tragic and it's actually something we've seen in the Arab world and parts of Asia and Latin America and used to be true in this part of the world too, in Europe, with economic and you get ahead by making other people worse off, by creating monopolies, by excluding others, by privileging your own group. Uh, and the change from a society where you get ahead by making other people worse off to a society where there is economic freedom and you get ahead by making other people better off by producing goods and services that they voluntarily want to change. That is a huge change in the dynamics of a society and in the psychology of the society. So the work that Mr. Bashir is supporting here today is important for producing prosperity and growth and employment, but it is also important for deep societal uh, and psychological reasons. Having taken up much of my uh, introductory time, I'll move very quickly to these charts. Uh, you'll, this is the evolution of economic freedom of the uh, four nations uh, that we are looking at today plus the world average. And that chart is actually going to give hope to some of our laggers, Pakistan and Indonesia, because if you look at New Zealand in 1975, New Zealand was lower in economic freedom than Pakistan and Indonesia are today. New Zealand took off quickly, created huge prosperity for its people. So my hope is that with the support of, again, people like Mr. Bashir in this conference, that we could see such an amazing growth in economic freedom in both Pakistan and Indonesia. Next slide, please. This is Hong Kong's scores. Hong Kong is number one in the world. Great scores, as you would guess. Next slide. And this shows their rank. As you can see, number one in the world, six in size of government, 11 in rule of law. And rule of law is something I'm going to focus on. As was established yesterday, a country can, if, if, if it's difficult for a country to become rich with a big government, a country can remain rich with a big government, so long as it has rule of law and the other aspects of economic uh, freedom. What worries me about Hong Kong, and I'll be very interested to hear what Andrew says, is sometimes I think our friends there focus a little bit too much on fairly small increases in government spending, uh, which may be ill-advised, uh, but don't focus as much on the huge threats to the rule of law coming from the mainland, where Communist Party officials have repeatedly said, and a number of them have said, that uh, the Communist Party, that the rule of law is subservient to the Communist Party. There have been continual, albeit small, batterings at the rule of the law in Hong Kong already by the mainland, the abduction of booksellers, for instance. Um, and I wonder if there's anything Hong Kong uh, can do, or if it's just simply the case that the mainland is going to have its will and 
that's it. Next slide, please. This is uh, New Zealand. Again, exceptional scores like many advanced nations. Uh, New Zealand can afford a large government. It is likely too large, uh, but you know, next slide. But as you can see, it, ha it has a fairly low score in size of government, but is number three in the world in legal structure. But if you remember the chart earlier, you will have seen uh, a slight decline in economic freedom in New Zealand. So I'll ask um, our New Zealand participant if there's something to be worried about there. Next slide. Uh, Indonesia. Next slide. As you can see, Indonesia has fairly low scores in a number of areas. What particularly worries me about Indonesia is the very low score in the legal structure. No nation has ever become rich with a weak legal structure. And coincidentally, uh, I'll be speaking at uh, the uh, uh, Indonesian Oil and Gas Conference next month. And I must tell you, and be interested what the panelist has to say, a number of people are interested about the regulatory and legal and taxation confusions around that sector. Next session. Uh, this, of course, is very close to our host's uh, heart. Uh, next slide. And as you can see, Pakistan has a dismal, dismal performance in the rule of law, 145 out of 159 nations in the rule of law. And I hope our panelists will be able to address how to move forward in that area. Next slide. Ah, that's the end of the slides and the end of my remarks. So uh, I'm afraid I don't know actually who goes first. So. Uh, Well, uh, shall we start with New Zealand then? Okay.